Are they going to be the whole time or just? No, 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 just five minutes. Just five minutes, okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Uh, there's a film through here doing some recording. We're going to use it for a promotional film for the college. So if there was anyone here that doesn't want to be recognized for any reason, whatever, then uh, you should. Uh, we're going to only use five minutes in the beginning of the lecture. Is that, is that get started. Um, <coughs> yes. Okay, my name is Judith <coughs> Molka Danielson and <coughs> this is project management and it's very nice to be able to teach a graduate course because there's so many of you and it's exciting to do this and I'm just wondering <coughs> how many people in here are English speaking as their first, well prefer English? Okay, so there's a, there's a bunch. Okay, this will take place in English, <coughs> this course, but on the final exam, if you want to reply your answers in Norwegian, that's allowed. And I can take the answer in Norwegian or English. Pre preferably book more. <laughs> um, um, so the portal that we're going to use for this course is HemoldX. And you can find it very easily, get the bottom of the page, just go Himmel to X. <coughs> and then we are under logistics. And we are using, um, this is project management. So uh, <coughs> after today, we should have our first video lecture and that will come up here. Uh, right now, uh, we just have the materials for the courses here. And this is also ac accessible through Fronter. So there's a link from Fronter to this same page. But you can go here and look for all the information of the course. Uh, we are, <coughs> uh, we'll get into the lecture about project management in a few minutes. But first I would like to go through some of the administration for the course. Uh, the exam date I just found out today was changed to 15th of May. The date that it was originally scheduled for was a holiday, and we have to have it on the 15th of May. If anyone has a problem with this, you should send me an email. It's on the web page, actually. Um, you can send an email to me, and that's how you'll be sending all your homeworks as well. So I will, before I get to the lecture schedule, I will talk about the required exercises for the course. <coughs> you, you need to do all the exercises in order to take the exam. 
So there's not going to be a grade on the exercises, but generally this will help you when you take the exam because the exam questions will reflect the same types of questions that you get in the exercises. The first one is here. And this is, um, you, you will see instructions at the top of each exercise. So uh, for the first exercise, it's due on February 11th. And you can work by yourself or with one other person on this exercise. And when you send me the report in email, you have to have both your names on the exercise. <coughs> Sometimes uh, there are answers for some of the exercises in the back of the book. But uh, I think that's OK, because it's just like a way of checking if you got it right. And it's not all of them, so it's just some of them. And we will um, be talking about the questions that are in this exercise in the next lecture, because that's from chapter 2. And some of them are from chapters 3 and 4. So. You you won't be able to answer this yet, but you should be able to by the time it's due. So that's exercise one. Exercise two is here. And again, you can work with by yourself or with one other person. And I, I will be going through the exercises when it gets closer to the date, just like talking about them. <coughs> uh, the final exercise is due on the 29th of April, the last lecture period. And you can work with groups of four to five students on this one. And what we'll do is I'm sending around a, a paper. And I want everyone to put your name on it and your email address that you prefer to use. And when we get to closer to the date, like when you hand in the second exercise, then I'll ask who wants to work together on the third exercise. And then I'll put up a list of who's working together on the web page. So you'll know who you're working with. Uh, this one has to do with uh, the later chapters and bringing it all together. But also it talks about, at the end, teamwork. So you, the, the part of your working on the project is going to be also evaluated in the last question. And in this exercise, the group needs to present their exercise in the last lecture. But that doesn't mean that everyone has to be here physically. So you can decide who's going to represent your group and present it at the last lecture. You can all if you want to, but you don't have to. So as I said, this is more administration work. Um, we have, we're only going to use the amount of time that we need in the lectures. So sometimes if we're done with the lecture, then that's it for the day. And uh, we're going to follow the lecture schedule. The lecture schedule has to do with um, following most of the chapters in the book. And probably on the days when the exercises are due, we'll talk about the exercises as well. OK. Uh, the book is in the bookstore. It's uh, this book. It's by uh, Larson and Gray, Project Management. And what I find interesting about this uh, subject is that <coughs> it's been taught for like uh, 15 years or something. And uh, I looked back at the notes the last from the, one of the prior lectures from 2004. And they were also using Larson and Gray back then. But it was like edition three instead of edition six. So you can um, be sure that the, the topics are very closely the same. And uh, some of the notes that I'm using up on the board are from the third edition. But they cover the same topics. And when I will add to the notes, I will talk about them from this book. So this is the official version of the book. But you can use, like I could find version 5 on the net in PDF. 
and you can use that if you want to read somewhere and you don't want to be carrying a book around. Uh, the exercises, I have taken some figures and things from this book, but they're also in, a lot of them are in version 5 as well. And everything is in the book, yeah. Yes, I see. Yes. Yes. You can use it, and it's only a 180 day trial or something like that. So, um, and I uh, foolishly started it last semester, so now my version's almost not good anymore. <laughs> so, um, uh, I guess I will ask the IT center if it's possible to install it on the PCs in the lab. And you can use it with your work, and it's probably helpful like for diagramming things and demonstrating things, but you don't have to use this. You c if you have something else, you can use something else. If you find something on the web for free, you can use that. So you don't have to use this one. Yeah, I don't think it's... Um, <coughs> and you can even... I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can do what it does, so... You might use Excel, for example, something like that. Yeah, <coughs> uh, yeah. The, the other thing is uh, some, I, I should change this to nine, this should be nine, not eight. Um, there's, this is like a week in February that I'm not lecturing, planning to take free. And there's some period around here where we have Easter holiday and um, the last lecture period is the 29th and then the, the exam will be the 15th of May. So um, some of the one lecture period I have suggested could be longer so that we could have a longer Easter break. So we'll probably do that. If there's any changes I'll put it on the schedule. So always go here to look for everything that's new. Um, yes. So here's the book that's this book. It's in the bookstore. And here is the fifth edition of this book that's in PDF. And I leave it up to you if you want to, how you want to use it. I I think there should be also one in the l of these in the library, but I don't know if they've gotten it. Uh, hopefully we'll have the lectures, but they're not up yet. And this will also be like from the top page. And then these are again the required exercises. And when I uh, get the list of your names and you start for bringing, sending in the exercises, I'll put who has delivered the exercises there. If you have questions about the exercises, it's best to ask it in lecture or send me an email and then we talk about it in lecture. Okay, so as far as administration goes, I should start sending this around. Um, Yes, I. Mm, yeah, I just send one one around because I don't know how many will fit here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, like I said, you can log into Fronter if you want. It has a list of the other students taking the course, but all of the materials is on this page. Yeah. Oh. Um, I thought I was using a microphone. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how it works. <laughs> Let's see. And do you know if I can use this for and with the speaker? 
system. I think you need an additional one. Additional one. Yeah. Okay. There seems no, that's not it. I'll have to ask for next uh, lecture. This one out. See what happened there. <laughs> ah. Did anyone notice when this went out? Okay, it's coming back. That's good. Um, I'm not uh, creating new PowerPoints for this and the PowerPoints that I have are from various versions of the book so this one happens to be from the fifth edition but most of them are from the third edition and I don't think it matters much because uh, it seems to cover the same points as the that are in the chapter <coughs> So um, now I'll finally get to the subject. Uh, project management. Probably all of you have been involved in managing a project. And uh, you'll probably all be um, managing projects in the future in, as part of your work. So um, regardless of which type of career you're following, uh, you probably will end up managing projects. And it doesn't mean that there's particularly a, a job that your title would be project manager, but um, most managers have this role or responsibility. So um, one of the key issues, I should get a pointer. One of the key issues about uh, pro what is a project is that it's uh, something that is non-routine. It's not something that you do uh, every day and that is part of your normal operating procedures, but it's usually something that uh, you do uh, uh, that's new and it has some unique element to it and that it's a, it's a one-time effort and that um, it has budget and resources committed to it. And it's the uh, objective is to meet customer needs often. But sometimes you do projects for yourself, like writing a research report, uh, and then you're, you're the customer. <laughs> but um, so the major characteristics of the project is that it usually has an established objective. Uh, it has a defined lifespan, so there's a beginning and an end. Uh, it requires uh, cooperation, maybe from several groups within the organization. And it could be at several levels of the organization. And it involves doing something new that has not been done before. So there's some kind of unique element to it. 
and uh, it has uh, specific time, cost, performance requirements. So when a project is completed successfully, usually some of the criteria for that are they say it's, re it's completed on time within budget and meets customer specifications. A program can be a series of projects. Maybe the projects are similar in nature, like an upgrade to a version of a, a program, but they can also be uh, different but related to a common goal. So usually a, um, like a company might have strategic goals in mind and they might have programs that are with collections of projects that contribute to that strategic goal. So the program is uh, a series of coordinated related multiple projects to extend over time to achieve that goal. Um, okay. So it says project completion of a required course in project management. That's an example of a project. But the completion of all the courses within a academic program would be an example of a program. Uh, what is the basic difference between repetitive work and projects? You can, um, repetitive work is like taking notes in class, whereas project is like writing a term paper. So there's something unique about writing the term paper. It was a, it's a new creation. So other examples are just uh, things you would do, like entering receipts, responding to supply chain requests, uh, practicing on the piano, a scale, uh, routine manufacturing of an iPod. And you can see here that designing of an iPod is considered a project. So the difference here is between manufacturing, which is something you've already designed and doing again, and then this is designing is creating something new, even though this was created a long time ago. It was at one point a, a project. <coughs> so now there might be creating iPhone 7, for example, would be a new project. Uh, attaching tags on a manufactured product, wire tag project, projects with GE and Walmart. So this has to do with um, um, creating changes to their uh, tracking of products and services. Uh, probably the most notable difference between version 5 and 6 is that there are some uh, cases that uh, you can read and those are different in the different versions but most of the points are the same. Okay. So um, we talk about the um, different stages of the, pro of the project's life cycle. And we have um, the defining stage. And here you, s you identify what are the goals, the specification, the task and the responsibilities, dividing the responsibilities among who's going to carry them out. And they show that this is the level of effort and that's the time it takes and that over a period of time um, uh, you will complete the different tasks within the, in a defining stage. So you might break this up as like uh, this way, but it's hard to say that um, how much time is spent on each. And if you spend uh, more time on this stage, uh, it, that's, it depends on, it's project dependent. So this is just kind of like a general, uh, generalization of that. And you can see that if you're spending time on the defining um, stage, this level of effort, that's, that's workers. And then you're sp spending time on the planning stage, that there's some overlapping between these stages. And this means that if you have workers, you have one worker, say one worker here and two workers here, 
uh, there's some overlapping here, so you actually might have two people working here. So these are cumulative also in terms of the amount of effort that you have to put in. Uh, so in the planning stage, there's uh, schedules, budgets, resources, risk, and staffing. And this book spends a, a lot of time talking about this stage. A uh, little bit, uh, it spends a little bit of on this, book, a lot of time on this stage. And then the execution, the status reports, uh, changes in the project's quality and forecast. And even though the company spends a lot of time on this stage and actually implementation, uh, the book is not focusing as much on this as it does on this stage. <laughs> and then closure is, um, there's chapters which discuss closure as well, but it's training customers, uh, transferring of uh, documents to the stakeholders, and then release of resources. It has like a timeout or something. Hmm. Um, so some of the parts like training customers can take more time. Let's hope it comes back. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think if you, if you don't have a book, <laughs> then I'll have to write some notes on the board, which is always a uh, tragedy because I don't write very well. Okay, so uh, two things I have to get them to figure out why this keeps shutting off and get a microphone. <laughs> How is the list going? Is it going around? Not there yet. Okay. Okay, did everyone in this row got it? Everyone in this row got it? No? You didn't get a list? Okay. But this row has it. Okay. Um yeah. Okay, keep keep sending it around. Don't don't let it get stuck. <laughs> okay, so uh what is the challenges of a project manager? Well, they have to manage these non-repetitive activities and they have to um make use of the resources from the company and they have to be the right interface to both the team members and to the customers. Uh, they should provide uh, direction, coordination, and, in, and integration of the project team. So they are uh, communicating. With the project team. And with the customers. And sometimes they are indirect customers. So we just call them stakeholders. Uh, there might be like the top management. And their job is not only to communicate, but also to direct, coordinate, and integrate. And they are integrating resources. Nothing. Maybe it's going on again. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so it also says you must induce the right people at the right time to address the right issues to make the right decisions. So they're basically responsible for getting the project done. Uh, why is the role of project management become more important today? So these are um, increased importance. of project management. Yes. <laughs> now I don't have to write it. <laughs> okay, so um, basically, um, uh, the, um, there's a compression in the product life cycle. So before when a product might be in the market and available and useful and sellable for a long period of time, like years and years, five years perhaps, uh, now, the usefulness of products uh, is the time within which you have to sell products has been compressed greatly. So if you have like an iPhone, uh, now they're up to six. Who knows how long that will be available before the next one comes out, seven. Uh, the time in the market for products, uh, the useful life of the product in the market has been reduced considerably. So they have to get things out faster, and they have to uh, be able to have them available as quickly as possible. But at the same time, we don't want to reduce quality. So there are some factors or trade-offs there. Uh, there's been an, a knowledge explosion. This means that many products, especially IT-related products, have become more complex, uh, drawing from knowledge bases from different fields of knowledge. So you might have um, uh, the handling of large amounts of data in, one, in, in a product, and it also can be a very specialized type of product. So if you're in the oil and gas industry, for example, you might have very specialized knowledge for uh, the equipment in that field. And then you also have a, um, a specialized language for that uh, specific field, and you have a lot of knowledge to bring together. <coughs> uh, the triple bottom line, planet, people, and profit, refers to uh, that um, businesses have to run efficiently and take care of the planet, so it's environmental concerns. Uh, people, uh, these are the human resources, they're important in terms of uh, production of new products, but also in the consumption of products. And then profit being able to uh, work efficiently and uh, to work at as low cost as possible. So these three issues have uh, increased the competition and the margin has for profit has uh, been uh, challenged. So we have uh, also corporate downsizing, companies trying to do the same service using less human resources or flexible human resources, an increased focus on customer. Uh, so we have the customer is the center point of the products, the lead user of the supply chain or the value chain. And we have small projects represent big problems. So uh, you could have a project that um, may be small but strategically important to the company. So it's being able to find what are the right projects or that are needed to uh, help the company compete strategically. Uh, the benefits of uh, the integrative approach to project management, uh, that is that um, the projects may have to do with a portion of the organization, uh, but it usually goes across different areas of the organization. And where people might have worked before in one area, they're more expected to be flexible and work across different areas. Uh, so when you have a 
um, integrative approach to project management, knowing what is being done within the whole organization, seeing which projects contribute to the organization's strategic goals. Then you gain a better overview of uh, the manager, who will have a better overview of the activities that are going on. Uh, they will have a bigger picture of the organizational resources that are used, so it knows what's available within the organization. Um, uh, the a risk assessment of their portfolio of each project, a rough metric of the firm's improvements in managing projects, and linkages to us, to senior management. So these are the advantages for the manager to, to provide an integrative approach. So be, uh, being aware of all of the, how all of the resources contribute. Um, if you're not using an integrated approach, uh, this can result in problems, and that is that uh, you're not tying together all uh, the strategies of the organization, so you may be favoring one project over another, and that may not contribute to the overall um, strategic goals of the company. And fail to select projects by their importance, but only by other factors and not integrated throughout the uh, project life cycle. Could mean you use more resources on the project than you should, or there might be delays in the completion of the project. And not uh, matching the project planning and the controls with the organizational culture. And this is important because um, when you complete a project, you want it to be used. And you want it to be useful to the ones that you've created it for. So if it doesn't match with the organizational culture, it may not, all of that may be not used. So the integrated management of projects has to do with um, the project management has to uh, fit in with a, uh, contributes to the portfolio management that contributes to the strategic alignment. And then these strategic alignments should inform uh, the decisions about which projects are included in the portfolio. And then these should inform which projects are prioritized in project management. But these are all influenced by also the culture. So it's just considering the culture and the business um, strategy together. So the role of portfolio management is when you have several projects. And it's uh, overseeing which projects you select, how you share resources among projects, how you it should encourage best practices, because some things were done before and may build on prior projects. Uh, balance the projects in the portfolio in, <coughs> uh, in order to represent a risk level that's appropriate to the organization. because. Uh, maybe some projects will fail, maybe some projects will be too expensive, and you need to be able to, great, put these in the big picture. Okay, and so the portfolio management should also improve communication among stakeholders and create a total organization perspective that goes beyond silo thinking. So again, the silo thinking has to do with um, not thinking about your own area, but thinking across the organization. And then improving the overall management of projects over time. OK, um, let's see. We're nearly at the end of this chapter. On page 17 in the book, if you happen to have a book, there's a figure that shows the social technical dimensions of project management. And it looks like, uh, it looks like this. And I can't draw this. <laughs> OK. So this, um, there's the technical factors. And there's the socio-cultural.
And they're saying that a good project manager has to be able to manage both of these dimensions. So they need to be able to deal with the social cultural factors, which are leadership, problem solving, teamwork, negotiation, politics, customer expectations. And this is basically dealing with the social aspects of the organization. And in addition, they need to be able to work with the technical aspects that are uh, scope and the, and the work schedule and the resource allocation and baseline budgets and status reports. Um, I just saw, I, I just read an article on LinkedIn. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's a network for, for business and um, for making contacts like, like a business type Facebook. And uh, they talked about IQ and EQ. And IQ is um, intelligence, and EQ is emotional t intelligence. And they're saying that good managers, they don't just say project managers, they say managers, have high EQs, <coughs> and that the most successful project managers um, basically have high EQs, and they may or may not have high IQs. So the, the more successful ones you can be more because they have high EQs they can be more successful than those that have high IQs and that has to do with this aspect the social social cultural aspect understanding how different groups work together the teams work together and how they communicate the goals of the organization you can always try Anyway, that was happened to be the last slide of the slide set for chapter one. And uh, chapter one doesn't have a lot of um, a lot of uh, meat to it. There's not a lot of complex issues here. Very basic issues. So um, I think uh, you'll see that uh, we get more into the chapter two is the organizational strategy and project selection. And we'll do that next week. But um, um, I thought, you know, today was just just getting everyone together for organization. So we're not going to have another hour after this. We're just going to have this one hour today. And then next week we'll start on chapter two. And um, if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask. And I need the paper where everyone has signed their names on it as well. Okay, if you have not signed the paper, please sign the paper before you leave. Did, did, okay, they didn't get it yet, okay. Okay, hopefully next week this works. You can also come for an event again for website. I said there was a link there, but I just looked for the common. All the other folks are looking front, so it's very. Not all. No, they, they, yeah, yeah. But there, there, there will be a link there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. Okay.